Welcome to the Steady On Podcast, where God's hard truth meets your hard story. I don't need to tell you that life gets hard. Life gets hard, really hard. But God's faithfulness is still active and alive in our hard. And these episodes are dedicated to remembering and claiming the promises of a faithful God. I'm your host, Angie Bauman. I'm a pastor and Bible teacher, founder of Steady On Ministries, and creator of the Step-by-Step Bible Study Method. But more than that, I'm a trauma and abuse survivor who carried a heavy weight of shame and worthlessness for many years, and I still struggle, but I live in much more freedom now because I know God through His Word and speak truth to the lies of the enemy with His Word. And that's what we do here. On Mondays, we take it in by studying the promises of God, And on Wednesdays, we live it out with teaching and testimony on the promises of God. So thank you for tuning in, my friend. You are the reason for this show, and I'm so very, very glad you are here. Let's get started. Hey, friend, I'm so glad you're here today for this episode with me and my guest, Jenny Zentz. Jenny is a speaker, a podcaster, a blogger, and fun fact about Jenny, I learned this when I was on her show a while back, and you can find that linked today in the show notes if you're interested, but I learned that she's about my sister's age, my younger sister's age, and they were in college at the same time at Murray State University in Murray, Kentucky. Jenny lives in Florida now, but it's always fun to make an in real life connection with an online friend. But we didn't spend time together again to talk about Murray State. Instead, we talked about strengthening our faith walks, how to put facts over feelings, how to deal with times when God feels silent, how to stir ourselves up when our time with God is leaving us wanting. Jenny has dealt with anxiety and depression issues, and because of that, she clings tightly to the promises of God. And I love the verse she talked about that is our theme for this week, Matthew 10, 27, hear it in the NIV. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Jenny knows about God speaking to her during dark times. And she also knows the joy of proclaiming his goodness towards her to others so their dark times are a little lighter. I know you will love Jenny's passion and fire, so grab a cup of coffee or a basket of laundry to fold or settle in as you're driving and prepare to be encouraged. Let's listen in. Hello, Steady On community, and welcome into this Live It Out podcast episode. I'm Angie Bauman, and with me today is Jenny Zentz. Jenny, welcome to the Steady On community. Thank you, Angie. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you. And friends, we've had a little bit of a hard time pressing record because we keep telling (laughs) stories. (laughs) And I'm just so grateful, Jenny, for your time today. One of the things that you talk a lot about is something that we talk about here in the Steady On community, and that is to stand on what you know, regardless of what you feel. Mm -hmm. Right. I have this, I used to for years, I had this post-it note on my computer monitor, actually, that said, it's a feeling, not a fact, (laughs) which would be the thing, the kind of thing that would remind me to go back to the facts and the promises of God. So I'm just going to ask you as we start, what does that look like in your life? Um, How do you, what does it mean Mm -hmm. to you to stand on what you know? How do you recognize in your emotions, your feelings, whatever, Mm -hmm. that it's time to, you know, remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just unpack that a little bit for us, if you will. Okay. I immediately have an emotional reaction Mm. to the thought. It is absolutely something that the Lord so impressed on my heart several years ago. Anxiety and depression are huge parts of my story. And they have had ups and downs and ups and downs in their severity throughout my life. But man, when the Lord just gave me that stand on what you know, regardless of how you feel, there was so much power in that. And it was something I knew I could always turn to because while the Lord can use our feelings, they're not something we need to always just take off with because we're also human and it's all over the place sometimes. And we're female. (laughs) And so that just adds something else to it, whether we like it or not. And if we know the word of God and we believe it to be the absolute truth that it is, then no matter what else comes against us, we can stand firm because we know our God has a plan. We know he works all things out for good. We know that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but we have to know the word of God. And so I always think about um, John 14, Jesus told us that the Holy Spirit would teach us the things or would remind us of the things that he had taught us. But I always say the spirit is not going to remind us of something we have not given mind to. Mm. So if we are not in the word regularly for ourselves and know what the word says, then when the hard times come, we don't have anything to stand on. And it's all about regularly being in the word of God for ourselves. 
because he knows us more than anyone. He knows us more than we know ourselves. And we don't have to have the pressure of understanding it all or making it all make sense or finding the right verse. If we will just sit with the Lord, just show up. I have a whole episode called just show up. And it's all about that. Sometimes no matter where we are in our walk with the Lord and how long we have been you know, a Christian, a believer, our faith in Jesus, no matter how long we've been there, we can feel either intimidated or overwhelmed by feeling like we have to figure it out. But the word of God is alive and active is what Hebrews tells us. And in Isaiah, we're told that his word that he sends out will not return void. It will accomplish what he wants it to accomplish. So I firmly believe that if we will just show up and we will just sit with the Lord and be real, God, I'm here. <laughs> I don't necessarily understand your word. I don't always get it. But like David prayed, open the eyes of my heart that I'll behold wondrous things out of your law. And he will do that. He loves to answer that. And so my passion comes from just being in his word and seeing what is truth. So that even in the really, really hard, yucky, terrible things of life, I can know what the word says and stand firm, even when my feelings are just all over the place. Yeah. All over the place. I have about three different directions I want to follow. I want to follow <laughs> up in about three different ways with that, Jenny. Let's do it. I'm, yeah, I know. Let's do it. Uh, I want, so the members of this community know are familiar with the step-by-step -step method. And I, I like what you were saying, because step three in our method, as we study is to find the heart, the character of God. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things like as we're looking at a verse, like those verse you were rattling off, I thought it was so important when you say we can't be reminded of something we don't know. And yet sometimes yeah. we think we can't memorize. We don't know the address, so we don't know enough, but we can yes. know when yeah. we have those feelings, right? We can know the heart, the character of God, because we've read it, we've learned it in so mm -hmm. many different places. Mm -hmm. And we can go back to that, which is one of the ways that I think it's important to remember, like, you don't you don't need to, I mean, it's so great to memorize scripture. So great. I think that's really an important part of this, but we can know the essence of who God says he is and who he says we are in him, right? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Without uh, knowing all the addresses of all mm -hmm. the different verses. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. Um, I love your idea of just show up. I love your idea of the Holy Spirit can't remind us of something that we don't already know. I'm thinking that the listener that's hearing you and your passion for the word and being able to rattle off some of the scriptures like you already have is asking, how did you get to that point? <laughs> what was that like? Because obviously you're a woman who does know the word, who is passionate about the word. Talk to us about that. How has yeah. that become such an important part of your life? Yeah. You know, it's, um, I can't take credit, you know, for it in that sense. And it's one of those things that I also never want anybody that I come in contact with to hold me as the standard of how to be passionate and fired up. And if I don't know the scripture like that, and my friends used to call it the Jenny app, <laughs> you know, um, part of it is I was given a natural memory that absorbs stuff quicker than some other people. History, we were talking about that before. History was my favorite subject. I could remember the dates and all this stuff. Now, the older I get, I'm not as sharp. I don't remember it like I used to, but that was kind of a natural thing for me. Some people have a quicker memory than others. So don't beat yourself up about that. But as far as being so passionate about and knowing so much of the word, it's repetition. And, you know, when people say they can't memorize, I do say, how many stupid lyrics to dumb songs do we still yeah. remember from when we were teenagers? Right. right? And how did we learn those? Yeah. Repetition to them over and over and over. And so I do like a little practical thing. And I have done this a lot myself in my life is I take note cards and I put them around my house. If there yes. is a scripture that jumps out at me that I'm just like, yes, yes. You know, whether it's Philippians 413, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And maybe it's like, I need to hear that right now because I'm going through a tough time. Write that sucker down, put it next to your toothbrush, put it next to your coffee pot, put it next to where you keep your keys, write it with dry erase marker on your bathroom mirror. And every time you see it, say it, you will accidentally memorize it. You know, things like that. There's little things that we can keep the word in front of us, which we're encouraged to do anyway. Does that answer the question yeah, at all? No, that's perfect. I love <laughs> Too it. Too many words. Nope. Nope. And what I'm going to follow up also is, you know, listening to you, watching you, obviously you're passionate. You have a, a joy 
a bubble, a bubbling that radiates from you. And yet you've said that anxiety and depression are part of your story. Mm -hmm. You talked to us about not being able to depend on your feelings, even though feelings are not bad, as you said, but mm -hmm. making our decisions from them is ill-advised, right? Yeah. Oftentimes. And so I'm thinking then that this is a practice for you still. I'm just going to guess this, but what is it like in your life when you are experiencing whatever it is that you're experiencing, you're thinking, oh no, this is the time to put that into action, right? Yeah. What, what's that? How do, how do you notice that it's time to shift into okay, I need to be posting some notes about my scriptures around me. I need to be going sure. back to these things. Yeah, sure. So there are times when just anybody who's battled depression knows that feeling of just that weight, that heaviness, like you're drowning. I mean, it is, and David talked about it in the Psalms. It is all over the Psalms, more than David, several Psalms mentioned that feeling of being in a pit. Mm -hmm. And one thing I love is he says, why are you so downcast? Oh, my soul. He's talking to himself, right? We talk to ourselves. Why do I feel this way? And then he says, I will praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord. And so sometimes we have to realize where we are and then turn, regardless of how we feel, to make a decision yeah. to praise God, even in the midst of feeling like we're in that pit. And that is what often will help to lift us out. Hey friend, I'm popping in to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by the Steady On email newsletter. Did you know every Friday I send encouragement and study resources to over 2,400 email inboxes? It's a joy and a privilege to do so. And if you're not receiving these gifts, I would love to get you signed up. Currently, I'm sending a new printable download to everyone who subscribes. It's 10 promises that help when I'm hurting. And on it, you will find verses of scripture linked with promises of God that are go-tos for me when I'm struggling. And if you're already a part of the email community, you can still have the resource. You'll find the link in today's show notes. And now back to the show. What you're just describing is an intentionality on knowing yes. what, you know, how this is what I need to be the best version of myself, yes. right? Yeah. To be the best wife, yeah. to be the best mom, to be yeah. the best in ministry, to be the best friend and, um, and to be able to recognize as we mature in Christ and just get older, quite frankly, right. To be able to recognize, oh, these are the things that are the easiest things that trip me up. Mm -hmm. And how yeah. do I, I, you know, just recently <clears throat> I need to do an interview with a ministry mentor that I have just like a little bit of a fragile relationship with, but it's okay, mm -hmm. but I can be very insecure in mm -hmm. that relationship. Mm -hmm. And I want to show up for this interview yeah. and serve her well and serve the people who will be listening well and all that. And I have done something over just, I'm learning to do something that I never would have done before. And that is I texted a good friend and said, would you be present as we're doing this, because just knowing mm -hmm. that you're there will help me feel less stupid. Good. Do you know yes. what I mean? Cause I will, yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean? I and exactly I guess I just mean. say that cause I'm like, I know myself. I uh -huh. know that this is going to create a, an opportunity for you to be insecure. And as you insecure, as you, as you deal with that insecurity, you'll shrink back. You won't mm -hmm. be as fully, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm like, but I think just somebody knowing that somebody's there that doesn't yeah. think I'm stupid. Yes. That you know, supports you exactly. And, you. Yeah. and it's been huge for me to ask for that kind of support. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think there's a lot of learning to be okay, not being okay. Yeah. And chapter 94 in Psalm verse 18, when I said my foot is slipping your mercy and loving kindness, O Lord held me up in the multitude of my anxious thoughts within me, your comforts cheer and delight my soul. One day I was reading that and praying through that scripture in the midst of my anxious thoughts within me, your comforts cheer and delight my soul. And I felt like the Lord was telling me, I am not telling you that I take away your anxious thoughts and cheer and delight you. I'm telling you in the midst of them, I can cheer and delight your soul. So be okay, not being okay sometimes, not trying to fix ourselves, but sitting with the Lord who will in the midst of our anxious thoughts, sit right there with us and be our comfort, our comforter, our cheer, you know, delighting our soul, loving our soul. And there's so much power and passion in that. Sometimes he takes us out of the problems, right. but more times than not, he gives us what we need to fight those battles. And he takes us through those things because there is growth and there is strength on the other side. I'm not familiar with that verse, the way it says that, that you cheer and delight my soul. I love mm. that. That's just, mm. there's something about okay. that, that is like, 
it means he's in our corner. That's what I'm receiving from it right now. Like actually, even if nobody would be in that interview saying Mm -hmm. you're not stupid, Mm -hmm. I am. Don't ever forget that I am. Right. Yeah. 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 Because even when it's hard. hard, Yeah. So I want to change gears just a little bit because I've yeah. also read some of your writings about spiritual burnout mm. and kind of stirring ourselves back up. And I'm wondering why, why is that something that you write about? What's that? I'm guessing that you don't write about something that you haven't experienced. So, uh, we don't hear a woman today that seemed like maybe she'd be prone to spiritual burnout, but maybe you've experienced that. What's mm. that, what's that been mm-hmm. like for you? Mm-hmm. Oh goodness. Yeah. Probably about two years ago. I really really went through what, if you look into it some, it's been termed the dark night of the soul by people like Augustine and, you know, way, way back where I had more spiritual frustration than answers. There was this spirit of just heaviness all over me. I can't fully explain that. I don't know how I fully came out of that, except to say that you've got to keep pressing in. I would go on bike ride miles and miles and just say, God, where are you? What's going on? I have so many questions. I have so many issues. I have so many frustrations. Just being real, but knowing, okay, I know I've been around this mountain. I'm going to come out on the other side. You have a calling and a purpose. You will fulfill your plans. So I just keep pressing in and I keep showing up. And eventually, not even all of a sudden, you know, like really slowly all of a sudden. You know, like after all this time, all of a sudden you're pulled out and you have something to share. And there is a scripture that says what you hear in the darkness, shout on the rooftops Mm -hmm. that I had never even noticed that verse until in the midst of that season. And it was like, that's it. That's if for no other reason we go through these dark, hard things so that we can shout on the rooftops, the things that he shows us in those dark corners Mm -hmm. and It brings glory to him. It enriches and stirs up our own soul within us. And he's faithful. And we get to see it again and again and again in a way that maybe we wouldn't if we had things easy. You know, if we never had those moments, we wouldn't seek him as hard. We wouldn't press in as hard. We wouldn't feel the need for him as hard. So I think it's just as long as we turn to and press in instead of pushing away from he's got this and he's got a plan and a purpose in the midst of it. Like Job, Mm -hmm. Job went through this time and he had no idea why. And we know it had nothing to do with Job. He had done everything right. He had done nothing wrong, but he was in much worse than I was. And yet on the other side of this, he said, you know, I'd heard about God before. This is me paraphrasing. Right. But but now now I have seen God. Now I have seen him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And trials, struggles, hard things in life can reveal to us God and his character, like nothing else. We can hear about it. We can know about it. We can read the word of God, but you know, we lost a baby between our two. And I just remember hitting rock bottom because it was my greatest fear come true. And yet God showed up in this supernatural way. And I saw him be the God that I always knew he was, that I had always told people he was because I knew what the scripture said, but I felt it and knew it and saw him being the God of the scripture, like I had never seen before. And it catapults your relationship. It catapults your faith. It catapults your passion to, if you just keep digging in and hard times are going to come. But like James said, without those hard trials, we could never have the perfection of our faith. So it, it's, it's all got a plan, even though sometimes it, it stinks, you know? Yeah. I appreciate what you're saying about the, I love that verse in the book of Job also that I had heard of him, but now I've seen him. And I think about your season of darkness and I think about my own season of darkness or seasons, I guess. Mm -hmm, I think about the one that is the most impactful to me still, even though it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I think about with God's faithfulness in that is that I gave up on me and up on connecting back with God. Um, I thought that that season of, I thought that was my new reality, if you will, you know, that this is, I have done this, or this has been done to me. And now this Mm -hmm. is the relationship I have with God. Mm -hmm. And part of the memory of his faithfulness is that he always wants something more for me and for us than I want for myself. Like he was fighting for me. I did not know it at the time, but he was fighting for me and for our relationship, if you will. And when I didn't have the desire 
I didn't have the knowledge to do it. I didn't have the Mm -hmm. will to do it. I didn't Mm -hmm. know what it was at risk if I didn't do it. I simply Mm -hmm. was so vulnerable. And yet I feel this um, faithfulness of him, this like protection saying, because I did keep showing up to a certain degree. I mean, I stayed in church and I didn't like hate him or anything. Like it wasn't like that. I just was like, well, this is, I didn't know better, I guess is part of it, you know, and I didn't know how to get myself through that. But I say that as encouragement because we don't have to know how to get ourselves through Mm -hmm. that. If we Mm -hmm. will just continue to have an open dialogue, if we will continue to try to look for the ways that he is present in our life. You know, I always say that the, the antidote for anxiety and um, worry and stress even is praise. It's thanks, thanks, thanksgiving and praise. If we can find the tiniest things sometimes in those dark places to praise him for, then it like opens up this ability to let the light shine in his light shine in. And I don't mean that trite. I mean that like in the dark places of our heart in lamentations. Yeah. Chapter three, if there was ever (laughs) a scripture that helped with depression or that spiritual darkness and heaviness verses 55 through 57, I called upon your name, O Lord, out of the depths of the mire, out of the dungeon. You heard my voice then. Oh, hide not your ear now at my prayer for relief. You drew me near on the day I called to you and you said, fear not. And gosh, is it Psalm where it talks about you put my feet upon the rock? Makes me want to sing that old song. I don't know if it's the same. That's not the only place, but uh, the verse for steady on is Psalm 40 verse two, which says he set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked Mm. along. That's our Mm -hmm. verse here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the same Mm -hmm. reason that you're talking about, because it says, and steadied me as I walked along, like you were saying earlier, he came to me in the midst of my, I'm not saying it right, but in the midst of it, like, it's not, we will slip sometimes we will Mm -hmm. forget. We will experience darkness. Mm -hmm. We will look away from him either intentionally or unintentionally. Right. We get Mm -hmm. caught up in that, but he he, I think of that as I wa- steadies me, as I walked along, it's like his hand on the small of my back, just saying, mm-hmm. I have you, yeah. I have you, I'm not going to let yeah. you fall. And, yeah. um, and what an yeah. encouragement for those of us who do feel like we're falling and we don't have a hand to grasp onto just mm-hmm. reach up and he will grasp yours. You don't even have yeah. to know he'll yeah. find you. He, I mean, he, yeah. do, he doesn't need to find you. He knows, yeah. he knows how Absolutely. to hang on to you, friend. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, in Exodus where Moses told the children of Israel, be still, hold yes. your peace. The yes. Lord will fight for you. 14, 14. Love that yes, one too. Ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And so, so that's just, you know, there are times where that was, that was my rock because yeah. like you said, we cannot fix ourselves. Mm-hmm. We can't save ourselves in any way. We cannot pull ourselves out of it. Yeah. Now, do we stir ourselves up? Yes. yes. How? By remembering the word of God, mm-hmm. by praising him, looking for by him. saying, yes. I will do this or God, I know on the other side of this, but even though you don't have to have the feelings yeah. that go along with those words, yeah. usually the feelings will follow your, your words yeah. and your actions. Mm-hmm. Right. But just knowing God, this is where I am and you're going to have to fight for me. Yeah. And he will. And he does. He yeah. will. And he does. Yeah. And he does. And the one thing about stirring ourselves up, that was a practice that the Lord gave me 20 years ago or more when I was going through a season kind of like this, just drought, not knowing just mm-hmm. the, yeah. I felt him impress on me just to say all his names, just say all his names. And I was just sitting in my room in my apartment And I was on my knees and I just said, God, you are my savior, my friend, my redeemer, my counselor. You're the Lord of Lords and the God of God. You are the Alpha, you are Omega, you are, you know, and as I began to do that, my spirit started bubbling up with inside me and it didn't, I didn't have to come up with any words on my own, you know? And that was a, I'd say that's a good one for somebody who's just kind of feeling blah right now. Yeah, that's you know, excellent. And I can feel the tears in my eyes. And I sometimes if we can say you are my comforter because and mm-hmm. this is what you've done for me, right? You are my deliverer because Ooh, and you can yes. bring it back into because that reminds yes. us again of his faithfulness. Like, remember when I was there and this is what yes. he offered and remember when I was there and yes. this is what he offered. And then you're like, and so I have no reason to doubt you're not going to yes. meet me right here Ooh, as well. You got me so excited. <laughs> so <laughs> I, love so it. I, I have to throw this in there. It's in my notes. And I always want to bring this up and I almost forgot, but just like David, when he was going to fight Goliath, if you read, it yes. says David started recalling the victories that God had given him in the past. And he told Saul, he said, just like this God delivered me from the hand of the bear and the hand of the lion. So this Philistine will be like one of them. 
and God will deliver him into my hands today. And then it says, David ran to the battle line. What? Yeah. And if we really get the picture of like, what's going on here? Because he kept recalling as he was facing his giant, the victories God had given him in the past. Amen. Amen. And sometimes when we can't look around in our current situations, don't give us a whole lot to stand on. If we can remember his faithfulness and what he's already done. Yeah. Right. Oh, it just, mm. Mm. yeah. I love that so much. Jenny. <laughs> Hey, you have um, just thrown out, and I mean that in the best way, a ton of scripture today, but I always like to ask, um, mm-hmm. it, and it can be one of those that you've already said, is there something in general that's sort of like a go-to verse for you or something you're going to right now? I just love to grab onto one more, either again or a new. Yeah. So I my, like my life all. verse, yeah. my life verse, if you will, Jeremiah 20 verse nine. And when I found this, I have it in my note, in my Bible. Of course, it's one of those things you read and you know, you've read it before. And all of a sudden one day it's like, what? Yeah. So I'm reading scripture and I'm thinking about how God made me such a crazy, loud, passionate, flailing person, (laughs) sometimes hard to contain. And and sometimes things going, Lord, is this okay? (laughs) And I read this scripture. And it says, if I say, I will not make mention of the Lord or speak any more in his name, in my mind and heart, it is as if there is a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of enduring it and holding it in. I cannot contain it any longer. Mm. Oh, I have an asterisk. And I was like, this is how I feel. And exclamation points written in my Bible. Nothing could have more clearly encapsulated personally how the Lord designed my spirit. We just appreciate you, my friend. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Jenny can be found at jennyzents.com. And I will link that and all the other places that you can find and follow her. Her podcast is called, I didn't write it down. Jenny, what's your podcast called? (laughs) The Intertwined Life Podcast. I should know that. The Intertwined Life. I will (laughs) link that in the show notes. (laughs) And uh, and I will, yes. And I will link the episode that that where uh, I was uh, invited to be on her show for sure. And um, thank you again for serving us today. And thank you, friend, for listening. Until next time. Peace. One of the beautiful things about sitting with someone like Jenny, who is just so evidently on fire for the Lord is that the words point us to Jesus and not to the one talking. It is my deep desire for my love for the Word of God to be as evident on my lips as what it was on Jenny's as I listened to her. Our verse this week again is Matthew 10, 27. In the HCSB, it goes like this. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. What you hear in a whisper, proclaim on the housetops. Thank you, Jenny, for serving us today with your live it out story. Keep shouting that message for all to hear. Next week, our Take It In verse will be from the beloved, much preached and taught on story of the prodigal or lost son. We'll focus in on Luke 15, 13 and talk about what it means to squander our inheritance. Yes, we're doing it too. And my guest will be Pastor Doug Brower, who joined me to talk about the temptation to chase after meaningless things. If you haven't yet, I'd be so grateful if you would subscribe or follow the podcast on whatever directory you're using to listen. It only takes a second and it guarantees you'll see new episodes as soon as they drop. Thank you so much for listening. I pray wherever your day takes you, you you're walking in the confident knowledge that you are a beloved, cherished child of God. Peace.